Two when you're done. You're doing a great job today. Slow and controlled, begin. Slow, slow, gentle. Yes, enough fast. Oh. One more, go, right away. Slow, 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 gentle. Folks, I got an interesting story for you. Charlie Jung and I were just walking around uh, Los Angeles. It was, a, it was a stroll, evening stroll. And we happened upon Barbara Brigade where Eugene Teo was walking around, ripping doors off hinges, punching people in the face. And he kept yelling, bring me an Asian challenger with whom to do a leg hypertrophy workout, evidence-based. He said all these things. People were scattering all around, running to the hills, helicopters crashing, the Hollywood sign broken in half. Luckily, Charlie Jung powered up to his level. And then and then Eugene was like, uh, uh. But then he was like, God! He also powered up to his shit. And now there's gonna be a fucking clash. And also I'm training. Eugene, it's a pleasure and honor to have you on our channel. How are you feeling? Thank you. I, I am I am quietly terrified. That was a very true story. And now I'm, All on, the, true. I'm on the come down past <laughs> the whole Hulk thing uh. out. And I'm back to Bruce Banner. I'm like, okay, now I've got to try to back it up somehow. Yeah. I'm tearing all my muscles off my bones. Yes, you have a few options. You can yeah. think your way through the shit because Bruce Banner's smart. Or you could Grey Hulk the shit where he's got both. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. whatever. Maybe you're not that into comics or I just <laughs> sit at home and masturbate alone by myself too much. <laughs> There. Thank you so much. Yes, I was there literally minutes ago and there's <laughs> semen on my shoulder. So, and it, you know, <laughs> your boy's shooting them all over. Anyway, folks, let's get to leg training. Let's get it on. Charlie, how are you feeling? Pretty good. How does it feel to be at Barbell Brigade where you are king? I feel like uh, Goku during the Spirit Bomb yes. episode. Yes, uh, you're going to draw power yeah. from all the other Asians. That's what's up. Well, you guys both be doing that. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Luckily, Hollywood's just down the street, baby. <laughs> I only need Jews down there for me to, oi, but Jews are stingy. So I'm like, ah, I don't know about the power level. Hey, are we gonna get canceled now or later? Let's find out, legs, boom. Yeah. We're gonna do a couple sets of everything. Uh, Probably a total of like seven or eight sets for the whole workout. All right. If you feel rhabdo e, just tell us you're fucking, that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if one good hard set out of everything would be ideal. Okay. Uh, and anything above that is bonus for us. So right. don't do anything stupid to get yourself killed. You know what I mean? All right. bit, you, have, you haven't been going super hardcore in a while? No, for, no. Yeah. So you know how that works. Like yeah. if you go over, yeah. we'll have to take you to the hospital if you blood, shit, so. That's a good YouTube video though. Oh, I'm sure. Happy, I'm happy to do it for the views, okay? Great, great, great. <laughs> That gnarly. Mm -hmm. That gnarly. That's really good. I mean, his hair, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Could be okay if we exchange some cues every now and again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. sure. Coach me. I'm here. I'm here to. All right. I'm here to be coached. Very cool. Very Get my cool. head between my legs. That's it. That's the goal. If you can do wrap all the way around to see your back, that's amazing. That's what the real good morning is. That's, that's when you're gonna have a good morning. That's right. Three exercises today. We're gonna try to get in. There's plenty of people in the gym today. The plan is. Uh, safety good morning. Comfortable way to grab the handles. Nothing magical about it. Couple sets of five to ten reps. Then we're gonna do leg press. Couple sets, my rep style, 10 to 20, 15 to 20 reps. And then we're gonna come back and do probably safety bar squats, high bar. Probably with a pause. Super ultra deep, super full arm style, of course. That'll be the leg workout. We all train cats on different days anyway. We'll see how long Mr. Eugene lasts. <laughs> Chest up, Mike. Oh. Smooth transition out of the bottom. There you go. Should I try to arch as much as I can? Mm -hmm. Like even extend, extend, extend? Oh, yeah. Sure. Right. 
and there's not any risk of hyperextension that's realistic. Yeah. Because as you apply load, yeah. your ability to extend is counteracted by the weight. So right. at worst, you end up a little bit more extended than neutral. Right. And then that's totally safe position. Yeah. No, if I was trying to lift the most weight in the good morning, I would take a completely neutral spine sure. and bear down. Okay. That's not the point. The All point right. is to get the hamstrings involved as much as possible. All right. And this uh, anterior pelvic tilt actually probably reduces neural signaling to your glutes. Sure. But we're not training glutes, we're training hamstrings. All right. And the trade-off is worth it to put them into that anterior pelvic tilt. The pre-stretch is killer. Another thing you want to consider is as you do this and start to descend, your knees are going to want to do this. Don't let them. Yes, keep them keep almost it. completely straight. Yeah. All right. Even if that means compromising depth. We don't care about depth. We, care we about don't care about the depth. We care about yeah. painful stretching your hamstring. All right. All right. We can count this as a work set if it feels good enough. All right. Big chest, butt back. Butt back. Butt back. Good. Yeah, Again. <laughs> butt back and up. Butt up. Butt up. Butt up. Oh, yeah. Couple more. Now your knees. Knees back a little bit. Butt up, knees back, knees back, knees back, knees back, knees back. Yeah. Good. Butt up, knees back, knees back. Don't let them drift. Yeah, there you go. Two more, Eugene. Let's go. Butt back, knees back too. Keep those knees straight. Yeah, that's better. Now keep them straighter on the way down. Straighter knees right there. Beautiful. Keep those knees, 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 knees. Up, rack. Sucks. Yeah, right? Yeah. Do you feel it in your hams and everything? I feel, yeah, I feel it all the way up now. Whereas before it was more like just at the bottom, like yes. towards the insertion. Yes. Now it's right the up. entire range of motion you feel yeah. your hams. Brilliant. <laughs>
Good. Is that all the way down? Touch the bottom of the machine. Yes. Three. Oh, 13, keep going. Control. Oh, 14. Up. Oh. Rest, breathe, breathe, breathe. Three, let's go. The goal is 20, you're at 15. Oh. Oh, yep, one more. Go, 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 go. Slow, control, up. Oh. Rest, breathe. Two and you're done. Right away. Slow. Then, oh. yep, that's it. One more. Go, 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 go. Slow, 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 slow. And up. Oh. Rap. That was nice, huh? Yeah, it was nice. Good stuff, man. Technique was great, execution was great. It was nice and slow, I love it. Locking your knees out when you leg press. Both of you and Charlie have what would be considered by the public eye a more aggressive lockout at the top. Yeah. Is that an issue? Or when does it become an issue? It is. It becomes an issue if you're handling more load with your legs, then your legs are able to lift and control. So people who unrack the leg press by pressing down their hands, yeah. they're by definition lifting a load they can't lift with their legs, putting the whole system in jeopardy. It's like taking your car, putting a rocket on it. Okay, but the engine's not in control then. That would be bad. Another is if you're incredibly rare, hyperlaxity condition of the joints. Right. And, and concomitantly don't know what you're doing. And that's probably about it. People unrack and lock with squats all the time. Yeah, for sure. Nobody bats an eye. And at any time people say, I've seen a ton of videos of people getting hurt. Yeah. They're lying by uh, implicit interpolation. So they've seen three videos and they, and they interpolate and say, there must be more, but there aren't. All right. But there just aren't that many people getting hurt doing this. Yeah. There's like one Arabic dude, the one white lady, and the one Indian dude, it wasn't even leg pressing a piece of equipment, he was leg pressing a car. Right. And it like was not trained. I'm sure there are a few other videos, mm. but hundreds of millions of people work out and there's videos of car accidents, but we still get into cars. Locking out a leg press to Charlie and I would be like going you know, 100, 100 kilometers an hour on a freeway. It's not without its risks, but it's worth the trade-offs of us getting a total complete range of motion. Right. We get to rest and reset a little bit at the top. And for us, the cognitive bandwidth of trying to slow down at the top is, wa is wasted effort. Yeah. Since the marginal risk of a, a massive injury is incredibly small. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. I've never seen it. Have you ever seen it? No, just those literally those, those three videos. Those are literally three videos. The white girl, I don't know who you maybe probably have seen the other one as well. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's a TikTok effect. That's a social media effect. 100%. You freak out by you get 100%. a lot of fear around it. 100%. And by, and by the way, if you comment on this video and you're like, I don't know, man, that wigs me out. You're a bitch. You're bitch made. I'm serious. You go, man, that wigs me out. It's, that freaks me out. Like, what are you bragging about, pussy? Like, shit is hard out here. You, you feel me? Like, no, Mark, the issue risk. is you're losing constant tension. So you're a little bitch by resting like that. That's Fuck. what the real issue is, isn't Fuck, it? Fuck, that's true. Yeah. How dare you take that split second loss oh, of tension? Oh, God. That was zero yep. reps. The muscles are like, we're going to grow. And as yeah. soon as tension goes away, they cancel that signal. Uh, uh, <laughs> cancel, and PK goes up. Everything Wait. sounds great. Gentle touch. Three. Four. Rest, breathe. Three, slow descent. Slow. Two more, finish up strong. Slow, gentle. Good, last one, gentle touch, slow. Don't you rush this rep. Slow, gentle touch, up. Oh. 
Good job, left. Good shit. That was great. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Well, it's easy for me to just yell at you. Yeah. Uh, do you want to do one more after this? Are, we, are you doing one more? Oh yeah, well I'm All doing right. a bunch more, but. All right, yeah, I'll do another. Eight. Peer pressure. And this is how I pull my quad. I don't know how you normally judge your rest periods, but this is a pretty long rest because we're working together and talking a bit. With that kind of length, would you expect me to be able to get the same kind of quality, same kind of performance of reps? I didn't, I didn't hit true failure there. Like I was very close, but. I can't say it's gonna be the same. Yeah. But I can say the probability of it being more similar is higher. Yeah. Than if we rested less. Right, yeah. yeah. And would you prefer to accumulate the team for shorter rest or would you rather take as long as I need to to be able to make sure I'm getting, I don't know, that stimulus? So I think the correct answer is you wanna make sure your local musculature is a limiting factor not your cardiovascular ability, yeah. not your central drive, and not other muscles. So for example, I do another set when I'm not breathing hard, when I feel strong, you know, right after the set you feel defeated. Yeah. And when my lower back isn't so burning that it's preventing me from doing another hard set, then I know in my next set my quads will be limiting. That may occur after two minutes. If I rest four minutes, it's still good, I'll just get more reps. Yeah. What I don't want to do is rest one minute yeah. and fail my set, get way few reps because I was just like gassed out. Yeah. We're not here to train our lungs, we're here to train yeah. our lungs. So I mean, assuming all else is equal, um, would it matter if I took, say I took four minutes, I feel, I feel good to go. If I took an extra two minutes, I took six minutes total, I'd definitely probably get a few more reps out. Is that, is that beneficial at all? No. It wouldn't you help can, at all. You can make up for it by just doing more sets. Right, right. Yeah, so you're better right. off just like saying, if you're good to go, just go, don't rest any longer. When you're ready yeah. to go, and your muscle is gonna be the limiting factor, feel free to go anytime. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you can't wait. Yeah, yeah. But there's no, uh, there's no good reason to wait. Right, right. Oh. One, control. Oh. Two, one more. Slow, slow, touch, up. Oh. Breathe. Two when you're done. You're doing a great job today. Slow and controlled. Begin. Slow, slow, gentle. Yes, and up fast. Oh. One more. Go. Right away. Slow, 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 slow. Gentle. Up. Oh. Rack. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. That's oh. You're good. Oh. Oh. Brilliant. Wunderbar. How old are you? <laughs> 21? We'll never know. 15. We'll never know. It's a devil's secret. 11 years old. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, a very deep voiced 11 year old. All right. It's all the trend. All the trend. Eugene Tio comes out as not natty. <laughs> all right. Everybody's natty here. Everybody's fucking natty on this camera right now. We never use that shit. Oop, oop. <laughs> Last set of leg press. I figured, fuck it, let's do a drop set because these, these guys are done like pressing it out. Have like three more sets, so fuck that. So we're gonna do drop set, six plates, five plates, four plates, three plates. Pause. 
Up. Ah. Nice. Уебали по-русски, блядь. Вот так, блядь. Last one. Go. Ah, oh, shit. Yes. Slavo Green. Ah. I feel you. better now. I feel better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Rack. Rack, 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 rack. You can rack. That's great. That feels horrible. Work set. All right. So about 10? We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Good technique. Right. Five to 10. Charlie, side spots here. We got you. I love it. Thank you. Thank oh, you yeah. for my ego. Yes. Remember, as you descend, so that your knees track forward while your heels stay down, big upright chest the whole time. And on the way up, push first with your chest. All right. Totally counterintuitive. Yeah. Bad idea if you want to be as strong as possible. Incredible idea for quad hypertrophy. Six, little pause at the bottom. That's five. Seven, two more. Five. Chest. Chest. Yes. Come on. One more. Slow. Up. Rest That's for a five. second, breathe. And one last one. Upright, good technique. Stay tight, okay? The whole time, you're in the hole. Chest up. Deep, up. Oh, great, rack. You look much better on that last rep. Yeah, have yeah, that little same. mini breath, yeah. helped a bit. Make it feel like the um, eight and nine, I started to shift a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just eight. Don't worry about the count, technique. One at a time. There you go. Going. Yes. You look beautiful. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You're not stopping the eight. Let's go. Oh, yes. Come on. That was beautiful. One more. Yep. Amazing. Stop, Amazing. Stop. Amazing. Let's go. I got it, I got it. Oh, thanks. Oh, that was good. Nice. That was so good. Oh, fuck yeah, Charlie. Two more. One more. Tough bar, huh? All right, Eugene. Good technique, upright, upright, upright. Stack vertically. Heels upright. Fight that bar back, yes. Knees forward, out, yes. Hip straight down the hole. Open up, pause, yes. Three, Test. off the first. Better, four. Drive your whole hips right down to the hole. Open your hips up. Better. Six. That's nice. Two more and then rest a little. Upright, upright. Control, control the way down. Control, control, yes. Up, rest, breathe. One, whatever you're ready. Chest up, up, up. 
Three, one and done. Chest up. Stand up, 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 keep pushing. Oh. Dude, good set. Wow. 20 reps. It's tough. That was unbelievable. Dude. Thanks for having my back, guys. Really appreciate it. Of course, man. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I um, was wandering around. I took a long, longer walk than usual to clear my head. Walked over to Melbourne, Australia and grabbed Eugene Teo and thought, let's get him on the channel, ask him some questions. So we're actually at uh, Barbell Brigade, the spirit home of all Asian lifters. That was a really long walk from Melbourne. And back but, to the Barbell Brigade. But we did it. We, we did, did it, it together. And that's what's important, friendship. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I actually wanted to ask you, Eugene, about how your family and friends responded to your increased fascination with and dedication to and life commitment to lifting. Because I come from a Russian Jewish background. And when you're a Russian Jew, the acceptable professions are professor of science, lawyer, doctor, business person that makes a lot of money or engineer of some sort. And that's really just it. Mm. And if you start dedicating yourself to muscle building, people around you get very confused and start to speculate that you're veering off. Um, you are Asian, clearly. I think so. I haven't <laughs> yeah. had the testing done just yet. There's no 23 in me. I'm not going to say anything yet. And uh, tell us a little bit about maybe some of your ancestry, culture, and uh, family friend situation growing up, and if mm. you ever hit any, and not necessarily speed bumps, but was there any uh, at any point when someone in your family or friends was like, mm. "Oh, like this is what you're really doing with your life"? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's a very similar story to what you say culturally. Where um, so I'm Malaysian, but I was born in Australia, and I did grow up in a very Australian ethnic community. Um, although you can't take my parents, who are Malaysian born, take their biases from their upbringing sure. out of them. So it's very typical where like our role is to become doctors, lawyers, dentists. My sister, my brother, um, they're doctor and they're both doctors. Amazing. My sister's a doctor, my brother is a dentist. And I was meant to do law. Um, and then I wound up in business as like a dropout thing. So, so what do you mean meant to do law? Well, it was just like, that was the thing you were going to do. Yeah, like I, I got into law school. I was like, you're going to go do that? I was like, oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll just do business instead. As a, as a cop out, I did business. Yes. Is that know? because, so real quick, is that because you liked law? No, no. So when you were meant to do law, is it because you were good at that kind of stuff? Or did your parents ever straight up tell you like, hey, you should be a, go be a lawyer? Right. So, I mean- and you can probably um, probably relate to this a lot as well, is um, the reason why we have these, um, it's not stigma, but these cultural beliefs around like what we should be is when we're growing up is because parents want stability for you. Of course. All you ever want. Success and stability. They want, they, want, they want what's best for their children. Right. Like they're not pushing on you for their own agenda. They want to actually be you, which um, is, is very much rooted into the Asian culture and also the Jewish culture. They want you to be successful, not for their benefit per se. Um, for Jews, it's absolutely for their benefit. Actually, I'm yeah, totally yeah. <laughs> I, I, I did date a Jewish girl for a while, and that was very much for the parents' benefit, mm, not, for, yes. not, not for her. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Oh, that didn't um, end well. <laughs> um, so for me, yeah, I did business, and I was studying. Actually, I started doing as an Asian. You, you, you're allowed to do business if you're doing accounting and finance. Yes, so, so that was my first business. thing. Yeah, that was my that was what I was doing, and then I um I failed that. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not working out for me. What so do you mean by failed? Like I, I literally failed all the subjects for accounting and finance yes. in my uh, first year through uni. So you seem really sharp. I suspect you just didn't give enough of a shit to try Yes, very hard. exactly okay. right. Because yeah, fresh out of high school. So um, yeah, fresh out of high school, I went, I started going to um, business school and um, I just started to realize that university is very different to schooling, like high school or whatever. High school is very rigid, very structured, and I'm very good at that. Like part of the Asian upbringing. You do this. Yeah, it's like, do this, classically trained, like as a musician, classically trained, where it's just like, here's the, here's the thing, do it over and over and over again. The reason why I did so well in school, like in high school, was because it's all rote learning. Like mm -hmm. it's all about, here's a textbook, write down these notes, put it to your memory, and spit it back out on a paper in the exam. Great at that. Mm -hmm. so I'm just studying, just nerd out and do that. But in university, it's like, well, hang on, just do whatever you want. <laughs> You're just like, 
you live, you live your life, you yeah, suffer yeah. the consequences. Sure. Come and to was, class, don't come to class. Yeah. And I was, I was not prepared for that whatsoever because I needed that structure because that's my upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big reason why I failed in a lot of what I did. I was like, this is just not working for me. And at the same time is when I finished high school, the second I finished high school, I started personal training. I started working in a gym and that was my thing. Because I you were already lifting that. weights. Yeah. I've already been lifting weights since I was about 13, 14, going oh, to the high wow. school gym. Um, and so my mum would drop me off at the gym at 5 a.m. or whatever. She's like, oh, it's for sport, you know, it's, it's part of this high schooling thing. And I was, you see, I was, you see, I was like enjoying it a lot. I was really obsessed with it. Um, and then when I started doing personal training, she's like, okay, this is a cool, like, this is a good um, part-time job for him. This is, a, this is a side hustle while he's going through uni. Of course. And then when he gets out of uni, he'll be qualified. He'll be, he'll be working in an investment bank. He'll be some economist or some finance kind of Somebody dude. Somebody we can tell family friends about in a dinner party conversation and they could have that like fake pride. Like, yeah. oh, Eugene's doing so yeah. well. Exactly. Peak Asian and Jewish achievement for parents. Exactly. So for me, when I was doing all the personal training, they just didn't see it as a serious thing. Sure. So yeah, you're good at it. It's, it's better than you working at Subway, which is what I was doing before that. Sure. My only other job has been, you know, selling sandwiches and sandwich artists. I bet you were pretty fucking good at it. I would always overload people with all the extra ingredients. Yo, the if I was your yeah. manager, I'd be like, cut that shit out. Bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm losing on the margins here. Times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that didn't. I was like, eh, this is fun. This is just, I, didn't, I never took it seriously. <laughs> just like most things, I don't take them seriously. The sandwich part, part, you were like, fine. The artist part, you really went in on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My creative juices can flow <laughs> with all the meatballs and the chicken fillets, extra cheese. What's that? You want shit cheese? people didn't order. I'll give you cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I looked jalapenos, extra jalapenos. Let's see what happens. <laughs> But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like they really didn't understand it. They didn't accept it. Most of my friends, like when I was in uni, the first couple of months of uni, I dove into head first into the whole party lifestyle. In high school, oh, I was partying really? hard. Like I was partying, doing drugs, school? everything. I didn't have yeah. any friends in high school. Yeah. I, I didn't have a, I wasn't very close to friends, but I was someone who was kind of insecure. So I'd go along to these parties and I was. Um, Did you have fun at them? Yeah, but it was more so like I was trying to fit in. Sure. I was trying to be accepted. Like, I'm going to do all these things because I just want to fit in and be cool. Um, and yeah, in, high, in, in, um, in university, your first few months, I was diving into that as well. Like the parties get in. more fun at university. Yeah. Um, at the same time, though, I started taking bodybuilding and training even more seriously. I got my first coach around that time as well, when oh. I was like 17, 18. And that's when I realized, okay, like, these two worlds don't mesh. I started like alienating myself specifically from all of my social group of friends, um, where I'd be skipping uni to eat. I'd be skipping uni parties to obviously sleep and train or whatever. Cause like you can't be hung over deadlifting the next day. Like a, I tried it. I, I tried that too. Yes. And I've realized these two things don't mix, don't mix. So I just stopped doing that. Yeah. Um, and then that was the point where I was like, yeah, you know what? I want to be focusing on bodybuilding. I can't be eating out. I can't be going out with my family. I can't be enjoying family events. My coach, Whoa. he didn't tell me not to do those things, but he didn't tell me to do those things. So in my mind, it was wrong to I have a cheat meal. I call it the, the default Asian assumption on how to do sports. Yeah. Look, I'm going to be good at this. I'm going to eye laser the fuck out of it and do everything exactly. over perfectly where I never cheat or never do anything. Exactly. I mean, it was high school. It was rote learning for me all over. I said, like, I'm yeah. going to do this. This is my, my machinistic kind of way of doing it and I'll get success. Um, and my parents didn't understand. They're like, why aren't you eating? Or why aren't you eating out with us? Why, yes, aren't you, why, why are you at Christmas bringing out your weighing scales to weigh out the turkey and the sweet potato? And even then you're stressing out because it's not your typical chicken breast. Yes. That would freak me out because it wasn't my meal plan. Oh, yeah. Um, then I understand. And then I got, I bulked up a lot and it was like a fat bulk. I had I'd no idea what I was doing. Again, just listen to my coach's See? orders. He yeah. got me really fat. About 40, 50 pounds I had to drop of pure body fat for my first show. Um, I'll, show I'll, I'll give you guys photos. So you can just like, put it up here. It'll be like nice little tubby Eugene. Um, Damn. Yeah, it was fun. It was Adorable. Fun. Yeah, it was puffy Aww. cheeks. It was very light skinned. Yes. Yeah, it was cute. It was cute. Um, but yeah, they didn't understand like, what's going on. And it wasn't until I did my first show where I actually got lean. My mum and dad were like, ah, oh, okay, this, this is why you did the last few years of delayed gratification and getting yourself fat or whatever, which is not what you have to do. No. But they, in their mind, they now saw the end product and they understood the process leading up to it. And they started to accept it a little bit more. Hmm. And then it was... Still, they are still in uni at the times. So I still saw, they still saw uni as being my thing. And it wasn't, and they, but they started to accept it more. And then it wasn't until maybe a few years later, I started working more in the gym and, and they saw me taking a lot more of my own initiative and pushing my business and growing my business more and taking on more clients. And then eventually getting to the point where like I was um, running events and everything. Did they you stop with, doing uni altogether? No, I, I did fin I did part, I did finish. Yeah. Please get degrees. With a, a business yeah. degree. Yeah. So a bachelor's in 
um, marketing and management. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I got to Did you use somehow. anything from school in your future career? Um, formally, no, but I'm absolutely certain subconsciously. I've got that mentality in my head of like, ah, oh, marketing, management, and yeah, all these yeah. kinds of business skills. Yeah, you're probably not doing a lot of dumb stuff that you would do by trial and error, just simply by like implicit yeah. understanding. Like, well, yeah. of course you would do this, but you don't remember where you got it from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that, yeah, that's very much how I looked at it. And then yeah, it wasn't until maybe the last the last five six years or so when I started like becoming more of a presence in the industry. People could, and my parents could see how I was um, making good money and I was helping a lot of people and being asked like travel around the world to do a lot of things. That's they're like, big deal. Oh, they're like, okay, yeah, you're not a doctor. Yeah, you're not a lawyer. Yeah, you're not whatever, but you're financially secure. That was the big thing mum would always say is like, yeah, huge. I'm really happy now because you can take care of yourself. Sure. You're financially secure. And that is important. Um, for sure. Yeah. And that's all, that's all they ever wanted for me. And that's all my, yeah, both my parents, every one of us wanted to make sure that I was set up and I was comfortable to be able to do my own thing. So when they, my mum could see me doing that, she was like, ah, oh, okay. Like there wasn't like a one day which just black and white changed, but sure. it was more so a car can accept this. And nowadays they're pretty supportive. Yeah, yeah. But now you know, mom is my biggest fan. Like she comes, I train her once a week at least at the gym, and we just wow, yeah, it's cool. great. It's really cool. Like she's very invested in the whole process. She helps me a lot with just taking care of everything as well. She's a very big support. I mean, she she's never been anti it. Sure. But, but now she's just like, kind of like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now she's just like, yeah, all in, and she's yeah, biggest fan. Last question related. Mm. Folks out there watching this, they're younger. They're really starting to get passionate about fitness. Folks around them, friends, family, parents, grandparents, great grandparents, ghosts of great 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 grandparents. Yes. Mm. Which visit you nightly, clearly. Yeah. Um, they don't maybe approve or are confused. What as an individual can you do? Or what should you do, or maybe what shouldn't you do, in order to ameliorate or remediate that dichotomy of you love this, but everyone else is like meh. And, and to sort of put the perspective here, I'm not even because a lot of people are like, you know, have these like Instagram pages of like motivation and empowerment. It's like tell everyone around you like this is the real me. You're yeah. just gonna have to get used to it. Well, you don't even know you're exploring, and also like pronouncing to people that like you shut up and you love me forever. It's kind of rude maybe. Mm -hmm. it, what is your approach to like, if people are like, I'm doing this thing and everyone around me is kind of like Matt or maybe disapproving. It, is your advice just grind to make something out of yourself and eventually everyone will recognize? Or is your advice, hey, tell people like, hey, I like this. And if you have any questions about it, I can answer them. Or what do you think? What, what, is, the, yeah. what is the way forward? Like like what I did personally was I just ground, ground through it. Sure. And then we got my success and eventually it worked so out. you never managed to, uh, you never bothered to explain or justify yeah. a ton of stuff. And, but my advice would be to do exactly that. Because the reason why people fear things, the reason why people get angry or upset is because of lack of understanding. And it's just a poor communication. So that was, in the past, my bad of not understanding why I'm doing it or where I'm going with it as well. I didn't really have an understanding on that. So how What's your I plan? You're like, that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to lift weights and hope this. for the best. Gonna, right. you know, PT for the rest of my life with personal training clients sure. on the floor. That was my thing. But had I had more awareness of it for myself, better understanding of why I'm doing things and, how, and where it may be going, like not a set like 20 year business, plan. who needs right. that? Yeah. But just some kind of vision to be able to then communicate and say, look, this is not just what I love to do or not just what I want to do because that doesn't really compel your parents. You know, if we all did what we wanted to do all the time, like live the hedonistic lifestyle, that's Masturbation, not that's all I would yeah, do. just 24-7. Um, it's it's got to be something where we say, this is not just what I want or need to do, this is, this is why I'm doing it. And this is what I think could be a beneficial thing. And it may be, it may be a negative experience too, but I need to go through that journey myself. I need to learn that it's not a good thing. And this is my life and I'm not going to say, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. But it's more like, this is like, you've got to let me go through my, my journey. And, my and I'm making a conscious decision to do this. And I'm doing my best to have as much evidence behind why I'm doing it. And even if it is wrong, because it won't always end up in a positive way. Totally. I have a whole gymnastics career I don't talk about. <laughs> okay. We'll unpack that later. <laughs> um, but even, yeah, it's just about as long as you can communicate them and just be open. I didn't open those doors to my parents. I didn't open those doors to my friends and my family. I just said, I'm going to do my thing. And that caused me a lot of negativity and a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress that could have been mitigated. Might not have gone away completely, but it could have been minimized. Better. Yeah, it could have been handled better. I may not have had as much of a negative impact on me mentally, emotionally, and on them emotionally as well, just by talking. Excellent. Excellent. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lastly, I'll have to just make sure I say this on camera. I didn't know who the fuck you were before we met. Legit. Fair enough. 
uh, and uh, <laughs> you're just the fucking man. It's been an incredibly pleasant experience. And, Thank you. And, and from now on, if anyone ever asked me, like, Eugene Tio said, you should do an exercise like this, but you say this, what do you think? I'll be like, we're just buddies, man. I'm not going to, whatever. You care. should trash talk me. I'd be like, he's, you, you should say he's got 100 pounds less body weight than me. Who do you think's correct? Oh, I'll go, I go further. I'm like, honestly, I think he's smart. He's just a mean guy. And I just wouldn't yeah. follow him because yeah. he's a mean person. Yeah. He, he hit me in the face off camera. He hurt me. <laughs> he, he bullied me. And I don't want to talk about it anymore. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I accept that. And we end on that note. We're beefing hard. Like, subscribe, and give this man a follow. He has a trillion more followers than me. So, you know what I'm saying? If you came here looking for him, give give us a follow. Lamborghinis <laughs> absolutely don't pay for themselves. Unless you run a Lamborghini farm and invest the Lamborghinis back into themselves. We'll talk off camera off about camera, that. Off camera, we're yeah. getting rich. Guys, see you next time.